Welcome back to Clapboard Reviews, film lovers. I'm the director, and as always, I call the shots. As you may have noticed, I have been away for a little while. Well, that's because the next movie I'm going to review might have broken my sanity just a little bit, causing me to see a psychiatrist, and after several weeks, prescribe me some happy pills. And two weeks of no movie reviews. Alright, I can live with that. First day, I was so happy. I bought this hat the first time I saw it, and I love it so much, I think I'm going to keep it. But, you know, enough about my personal life. I want to talk about Fantastic Four. With its reboot coming soon, I thought there would be no better time to examine what makes this movie so terrible. Well, for starters, like the sentence, it's cliché, formulaic, and redundant. Because we haven't seen it enough in Spider-Man, Hulk, and Daredevil, the company involved with this steaming pile of cow dung thought they were smelling success when they sent this out to the theaters. They were smelling something alright, but it wasn't success and it wasn't dung. What follows is what can only be described as a step-by-step -step guide to making a blockbuster superhero movie as cheaply as possible. And I'm gonna show you how they did that because I'm just so happy. After spending only 5 seconds on the title screen with no other credits, we begin with step 1 in our guide, introduce the main characters. Now remember, the biggest mistake you can make is giving your characters complex identities, so make sure they follow the time-tested never-fails hero tropes. The brains, the muscle, the pretty one, the obvious villain, and the always important part of the group, the one with the boobies. If it looks like she can't act, don't worry, just repeat to yourself, at least she has boobies. Once you've got all your characters and you've got them where you want them, we can proceed to step two, the powers giving plot device. Just like the scientist in Spider-Man who wasn't concerned about the missing spider, don't have your characters focus on something important like the scientific experiment that was mentioned earlier. Instead, have them focus on something meaningless and trivial, like someone's love life. His eyes say differently, don't they? Hey, two hearts got busted last time. Maybe she's not over it either. Wow, Dr. Phil, that's deep. Keep in mind to not spend too much time on this because the real important part is when the shit hits the fan. <laughs> yep, just like that. Oh, and don't bother showing or explaining how they got back to Earth because, in reality, no one cares. Now that they have their powers, we transition into step three, do superhero stuff. Of course, the basics of superheroing is saving people. This can be done with a simple car pileup, a semi with the leaking gas tank, and of course, saving someone from stuck seatbelt syndrome. Seatbelt? High tech shit! Next, we take care of the training sequences and battles. The problem with Spider-Man was that it used too many battle scenes and not enough training. This can be easily fixed by spending all of the second act on the hero's training to use their powers. No crime fighting, one battle, and a whole lot of training. Pretty exciting, isn't it? Always like to keep my audience riveted. Now writing a superhero movie is hard. It's really, really hard. This is where step four comes in handy. Cut and paste. If you're having trouble creating scenes, you can just use the ones from more successful movies, like Spider-Man. Remember the bridge and the board of directors scene? Well, those will work well in this movie too. And there we go, we created our scenes with very little effort. Now that we have our beginning, middle, and end, we can move on to step five, don't have any direction. Most filmmakers will pick one of two tones they want their story to be, serious or funny. But really, picking one is just limiting yourself to a lot of possibilities, so it's best to go with both. This allows you to do a number of things with your scenes, like putting the Wilhelm scream in a passing cloud, pass Earth's orbit, pass Earth's orbit, shooting a hole through a man's body, some obvious foreshadowing dialogue. Same old Reed, always stretching, reaching for the stars. With... How are you feeling? Solid. It'll be great. What's the worst that can happen? And of course, the best way to get box office success? Fan service. Oh. Why don't you strip down and have a hundred people stare at you? And to end your movie, have your character burn their logo in the sky. Why? Well, why the fuck not? And that's how you make a generic superhero movie. Remember, introduce your main characters, make them obvious stereotypes, have a superpowers giving plot device, don't do a lot of action scenes, cut and paste from previous movies, and don't have any direction. 
And now that you know the secret, you're ready to show the world your lazy brilliance. Go, my little followers! Make Hollywood understand what it's been missing! I will be here right where you can find me, for I am the director, and I call the shots.